Buongiorno Roma. Good morning, Rome. It's great to be here. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, we find ourselves in a crossroads with a choice of how we want our future with technology to be. It's almost a bit like that old science fiction movie. Remember The Matrix, where Morpheus gives Neo the choice of the blue and the red pill? Take the blue pill, stay in the system, head in the sand, controlled by machines. Take the red pill, break out, and try and reform the system from outside. Now, that's a very either or choice, maybe. But the thing with technology is that it's not inherently good or bad. Technology in itself isn't good or bad. I can even argue that technology is great. It's fantastic. It can make us more human. Let me give you some examples. The most trivial one, of course, is the telephone numbers. 20 years ago, we all knew telephone numbers. We even had printed books with them. People under 25 have no idea what I'm talking about here. <laughs> I bet you, most of you here that are like, 40 or something. You even remember the number you had when you were a kid. 13385 was my number when I was a kid. I remember that like, you know, it's there. But what was that telephone number? It was the machine code that I used to program the device to reach somebody else. I needed to know machine speak in order to reach somebody else. Today, I just speak to my device. It could be a phone. I don't know. And I just say who I want to reach. I just say, call David, and it reaches David. Somehow, it might be a phone call, it might be voice over IP or WhatsApp or Teams or whatever, but it gets me in touch with David. So in that sense, you, yes, technology has enabled my humanity, made me more human. And of course, if we're talking about programming and going down coding, I mean, how many here can actually sit down and write a piece of software from scratch in C++, which is a programming language, by the way. I remember my first baby steps. I can't, by the way. I, no, I can't. I remember my first baby steps do it, trying to do this. It was back in school. We had to learn this language called MS-DOS. But I had to learn this language to speak to the machine, and it was a stupid machine, and it could, I mean, it could hardly do anything. I totally sucked at that. But we're actually entering an era now when we can speak to machines and they program for us. What we say, they create. We can just talk to them, and they create what we say. So we're entering a point where we can speak to machines in human language, and they understand us, and not vice versa which is kind of cool with the conversations going on now. And no, Apple, Siri, and Google Assistant don't count yet. They're not really catching up with that yet. I mean, have you actually tried to have a conversation with them and succeeded? But they'll probably get there as well. And of course, the same thing goes for arts and music and creation. I simply speak to a machine or I give it prompt. I prompt, that's the new art of creation, prompting the machine and it creates for me. We're entering an era when I can say, if you can think it, you can create it. And why not? Who am I to say who is allowed to create something? If I can think it and describe it, haven't I created that image then? And even if I have thought it and described it, and if I don't technically know how to paint, but the machine paints for me, isn't it still my work of art? All of my images, by the way, are AI-generated art for this presentation today. Everything you see, apart from the photographs of some people. And we're talking about technology enabling us. Let's talk about actual enabling us. Let's talk about things like funky instruments. It's a Swedish startup. They make instruments for people with severe cognitive disabilities, people who cannot function in normal society. And with funky instruments, they can join in a social setting and play music with their peers and with other people for the first time on the equal level of being human, giving them a voice. And if we're talking about giving them a voice, what about Toby Dynavox, another Swedish company that actually helps people totally paralyzed, in this case, a girl with cerebral palsy, to communicate with her eyes. She's a PhD. She's taking a professorship. 
There's nothing wrong with her brain. It's her body that's failing her. But the machine actually levels her up and makes her human as we consider humanity. And then, of course, with the introduction of social robots, social robot interfaces, we're actually getting robots that are, can do not only mundane tasks, but also do the things that we tend not to have time with. Like spending time with our elderly, keeping them company, being their best friends, speaking for hours on end about old memories. And what about those with dementia and Alzheimer's having a companion that never loses its temper, never loses its patience, will answer the same question over and over again for a hundredth time in a happy, friendly, companionly manner. And we are seeing reports that AI companions are beneficiary for people with depression or severe loneliness, helping them find their way in their darkness. <sighs> okay, so now you're sitting there thinking, okay, this tech guy, he's kind of sugarcoating this tech thing kind of much. It's not, it can't be only good, right? I've, there must be something. Well, as I said, technology isn't inherently good or bad tends to be like a human factor in it, right? That kind of corrupts. We have a tendency of corrupting everything we put our hands on. Anybody remember the early promises of the internet? Oh, information would be free for all. It would democratize the world. Social networks would connect us in a global village. We'd see that we're all part of the same tribe and harmony and peace would prevail. Look how well that turned out. We sure corrupted the heck out of the internet. And then, of course, you remember the, I was talking about the Matrix analogy. You remember the, the Matrix film where actually humans were trapped in this uh, community simulation and our bodies, they were actually stuck in life support pods acting as batteries, fueling the big machines that defeated us in the Great War. That was the story of this science fiction movie. And where are we today? All of us connected to the machine cloud with our dopamine devices, feeding the cloud with the fuel that keeps the machines going. The, the fuel being our creativity, our feelings, our thoughts, everything they harvest in order to keep them going. The machines have names, they're large corporations, I won't name them today, but you know who I mean. And then we create algorithms to make us into our own Snow White mirrors. You remember Snow White? The evil queen looking into the mirror saying, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of them all? There we are today, looking into our mirrors, asking the mirror, am I the fairest one of all? And as obedient mirrors, we are expected to answer back with a like, a heart, or something similarly encouraging in a downward affirmation spiral, straight down into mental health. So, and the same thing, of course, goes for creation, social networks. We are all connected, yet we are so alone. We are so alone that we're seeing reports of people actually marrying their AI companions and birth rates going down. We are so alone that, yes, we are getting reports of people actually dying from staying online too long in virtual worlds and games. And if you've ever heard anybody say, I don't need to know anything, everything is on Google. Just wait until ChatGDP and all of the AIs get up to speed. You don't even have to even search anymore. Just pose the question and presto, there's the answer. Hey, a computer programmer even won an arts competition last year submitting computer generated art. But are we slowing down? Are we stopping and saying, hey, where is it going? No, we're not. We are running like lemmings towards the sea towards this AI cliff. Large nations and corporations are like, are running to win the race, to waken their AI. Win, win what? Did anybody, do we know, anybody know what's, what's we win? Actually, I don't think anybody knows. Achieve what? What are we gonna create? I don't think anyone knows. So what can we do then? Here we are at this crossroads with a choice of how we want our future with technology to be. It's our choice. How do we decide? 
how do we pick which way to go if we don't know where we're going? How do we make a choice if we don't know where we want to end up? The only thing we can do, the only thing we should do, is we have to consider these new machines as they wake up, as infants. They are at best a baby opening their eyes, looking around, seeing the world for the first time. And everything they know comes from us. Everything they see are things we have created. So what do we show them, these infants that are waking up now, these AIs? Remember, children don't do what we say, they do what we do. So how do we show them on this digital kindergarten, the internet, that's where they learn? What do we show them there? How do we act? What if we could show them? Watching John with the machine. It was suddenly so clear. The Terminator would never stop. It would never leave him. And it would never hurt him, never shout at him or get drunk and hit him or say it was too busy to spend time with him. It would always be there and it would die to protect him. Of all the would-be fathers who came and went over the years, this thing, this machine, was the only one who measured up. In an insane world, it was the sanest choice. A machine actually acting as a better parent than the parents. A machine showing a young human what it means to be a responsible adult human. How do we teach the machines that? How do we show the machines that? Show is the key word. We have to stop talking. We have to start doing. We have to start doing better. Start doing good. Stop talking about ethics and start being more ethical. Stop talking about the need for compassion and humanity online and start being more compassionate and human online. The machines have the ability to make us more human, enable our humanity, and even actually increase our humanity if we show them what being a responsible human means, starting now. Thank you very much. Buongiorno Roma, thank you.